What's up, guys? It is Sam here, and today I wanted to talk about Andrew Yang versus Joe Biden and see who the real winner is, not based upon some talking head's opinion about what happened or uh, uh, the words that they said, but more importantly, like how America thinks who won, right? And how do we do that? Well, we're going to take a look at the impact from the debate the other night on the YouTube search volume, the Google search volume over the 90-30 and, and the past seven days and a couple days, um, the impact on their website, so their campaign website, to see how that, the, the their global and the U.S. ranking has changed. Uh, then we're going to take a look at the actual hashtag usage for this, and this is actually supposed to be not on their website, this is actually on um, Twitter. And... Something super interesting, we're going to take a look at the time of day for the usage of the hashtag. Like super nerdy stuff, but it tells a little bit more about the demographics of the individuals that are interested. Like I don't honestly really listen to what any of these candidates say tremendously. I have listened to some of the stuff Andrew Yang says, but I haven't really listened uh, to what anybody else says about policies and whatnot. I want to know what America thinks like, who is actually relevant, what America thinks of these people. Um, because that's way more telling. That's way more informative to me. So that's what I'm doing by looking at this. Then we're going to take a look at the their actual YouTube channel. So Andrew Andrew Yang's YouTube channel and Joe Biden's YouTube channel. And we're going to take a look at the, the sheer number of views on the day of the election in the next two days. And the total number of subscribers. So we're going to take a look at those and just decide who is the actual winner. I'll say I'll say who I believe uh, had the bigger impact in terms of winning. Um, but I think before we get into that, we have to define what winning is, right? Because if we don't have the same definition of what winning is, then I don't think we can come to the same conclusion. Um, I'm going to present the data. You can make the, your own decision. How I'm going to define winning is increasing the amount of relevance in the American public's mind. That's, that's how I'm going to define that. You can define it differently. Maybe you can refine the definition that I just laid out. But that's just the framework that I'm using to go into this so you can get an understanding of what and how I look at the data that I'm looking at. Okay, now, if you want to stay tuned for all of that, um, it's coming up in a second. If this is your first time here, what's good? My name is Sam, and if you're a returning user, it's good to freaking see you. All right, so let's start with the, the macro view here. Um, we're going to take a look at the, the web search, and we're going to look at the 90-day. Um, so over the past 90 days, the search term Andrew Yang versus the search term of Joe Biden. And as we can see, if we scroll down here to the, um, the geographic view here, we see that Andrew Yang has, you know, the West Coast basically has about seven states that have higher search volume out of the total search volume for these two candidates. And Joe Biden just has basically most of the country. Now... Let's t take a step in and take a look at the 30-day here, which we just had up to, if those of you are astute. You can see that on average, it shifted, right? So now Joe Biden has less search volume on average. And look at the geographic breakdown. There's more search volume for these, out of these two candidates, the total search volume, there's more of that that goes to Andrew Yang. It looks like around 50%. I'm not going to count the states, but you can... Pause this video right now. I'll make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to count if somebody wants to do that. Holy fuck. There you go. So you can see here that he's increased the number of states that he is predominantly searched for by a drastic margin. And we get to see right here. This, this is this is what I was talking about in last night's video when we talked about the guerrilla marketing that Andrew Yang did at the debate. Absolutely insane. Very, very well thought out. Very, very good execution of that, and I think we're going to continue to see the results of that play out over this coming week. Um, I did want to touch on that um, in a second when we get to the website, but uh, if you want to check that video out, I think that was one of the best pieces of content I've made in quite a while. You should just check out the channel of Andrew Yang's Guerrilla Marketing for the Debate 3 and what he did to increase his exposure and really take advantage of it that none of the other candidates did. Um, so... 
Uh, let's go into the seven day and see how the past seven days work. And if we look at that that picture there, we can probably guess. Uh, again, Andrew Yang is on average beating right over here on the left hand side. Average, he's got a slightly higher, just marginally higher, but on a statewide uh, basis breakdown, geographically peak speaking over the last seven days, he's had more search volume than Joe Biden in two-thirds, roughly, of all the states in the U.S. So that's pretty phenomenal. For, so 90 days ago, he had like seven states. Now he's got two-thirds of the states that are searching for his name more than Joe Biden. And remember, the reason I picked Joe Biden is just because that's what everybody else talks about in terms of the media and the legacy players. Like, oh, Joe Biden went ahead. He really pulled himself ahead of everybody else. And like, clearly that's not the case. I mean, it's pretty representative in the data, but you can decide for yourself. I'm just going to show you what I'm looking at. Um, and the, today is uh, 9.14 at uh, 12.30 p.m. So let's take a look at, um, yeah, let's just take a look at the last tw 24 hours here. Joe Biden actually has more in the micro in the, in the last 24 hours, so that's kind of interesting. So kudos to Joe Biden, whatever happened right over here. Um, over the last 24 hours, we did see a spike um, in the, the search for him on the web. So nice job, Joe Biden, whatever happened there. This is over the last 24 hours, primarily Joe Biden, but you can also see this on average. He's got more search volume. And over the past 24 hours, it looks like just on average with this big spike here across this time period from the 13th at 4 o'clock, 4.30 up until about midnight. And... Remember some of this when we get into the hashtags to show the timing of this. Now let's take a step back out to the 90 day and let's go over to let's go over to YouTube search and take a look at YouTube search at the 90 day and just give us some type of context. So right here we can see it's easily two to one. So twice as many searches for Andrew Yang as Joe Biden. And this is at the 90 day, where at the 90 day on the Google search volume, it would told a completely different story. Um, as we can see here, the only states that look for a little bit more uh, Joe Biden than they do uh, Andrew Yang is 51 to 49, and this is Delaware, and then Maine, which is 41 to 59. All the other states are slightly or a, a lot in favor of Andrew Yang. As you can see, as I scroll over these, uh, a lot of them are in the 60s, 70s, like quite a bit more search traffic. Wow, that was, what was it? Was that? Minnesota has 82% more search volume for Andrew Yang than Joe Biden. That's incredible. Look, California, 80 to 20. That's incredible. California is the most populated state in the entire country. Let's check Texas, 70%, 31, 70 to 30. So, Something you can see what's going on here. Uh, let's take a look at the 30 day. I feel like this is probably just going to be more pronounced. Again, this is about two and a half times now. Instead of just two to one, it's about two and a half times. This probably coincides with the increase in exposure that we saw on the Google search volume. Also, I'd love to hear your comments down below. Uh, we can see, again, it, Andrew Bang is just walking away with it. Let's jump into the seven day here. Uh, again, a seven day, at least two to one in terms of this, right? Eight to 20. So at least two to a little bit more than two to one, two and a half to one. Um, so that means for every two and a half searches for Andrew Yang, there's one search for Joe Biden. That's pretty substantial. Um, and it's got these like seasonality spikes, which let's see what time it is. 2 a.m. They spike at 2 a.m., which is kind of interesting. Um, but... Keep, keep an eye on that, right? Because it's kind of interesting that there's a, a, a subgroup of the population that is looking for and, 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 and this information around in the middle of the night, right? This is like normal people. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Just, just a thought. Um, again, substantially more for Andrew Yang, but we can see that Joe Biden's pulled ahead a little bit more in uh, or caught up a little bit in the seven day. Now let's take a look at the last 24 hours here and see what that story tells when all the data loads. The internet's pretty freaking slow. So let's reload this page and see what comes up. Okay, so we've got the past day uh, again, but Joe Biden's caught up again, similar to the uh, Google search. Right now we're looking at the YouTube search, but the Google search showed um, 
a slight win for Joe Biden in the past 24 hours, but not so on YouTube. And there's a bigger margin on YouTube than there is on um, when you look at web search. So see the volume right over here between the average searches. Now, if we come back over here, it's just a tiny little margin, 29 to 26, versus on YouTube, it was 46 to 32. So substantially more search volume on average uh, for um, Andrew Yang on YouTube. Again, uh, the breakdown has shifted so that at, uh, Joe Biden has a lot more search volume. Look, at there's no search volume for Andrew Yang in the past 24 hours in Wyoming that's reported. Uh, that's pretty crazy. 83 to 17, insane. Um, you can see the different shading gives us the degree of how much ahead they are, right? But some of the, 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 the three most popular states we got over here, 70 to 31, um, 54 to 46, that's pretty close in Texas. And um, over here, 55 to 45, and then let's check New York, 57 to 43. So in those four states, the most popular states, um, he is he's winning, which is kind of interesting. Um, so let's jump over to their website. And this is where I found this super interesting. So um, as you can see, this is over the past 90 days. So we don't get a ton of uh, data around what's happened in the past day or two days, right? Because the debate happened two days ago. But what we do have is a U.S. ranking of 2,114 and a global ranking of, this is of Andrew Yang's website, so it's Yang2020, so let's come up here, we've got Yang2020.com, we come down, and globally he's ranked about just under 15,000th, and just um, over 2100th, 20, 2100 spot in the U.S., so this is out of all sites in the U.S., his site ranks 2100. That's pretty substantial. Uh, and I just want to draw your attention down here to the total amount of time that people spend on the site on average per visit and the total number of views, uh, page views that they have per visitor, right? 2.5 to 3 minutes and 13 seconds. So what that means is that on average, when a person comes to Andrew Yang's site, they, they visit 2.5 pages per visit and they spend on average three minutes and 13 seconds take a look at what i did last night so this is pulling footage from the uh guerrilla marketing tactics video that i did last night again go check out the channel if you want to watch that but this right so this is the this is the video this is my channel here but look right in here what we have is this is yesterday so it's been uh 12 uh about 12 and a half hours uh, 13 hours since we did this video and yesterday he was ranked at 15,700 so he's moved up uh, over a thousand spots in terms of his global ranking that's substantial now let's take a look over here 2536 so this is the ranking in the US hopefully you guys can see that it's pretty small try to make that a little bit bigger which is right uh, right there it says in the US 2536 so when we come back over here, he's at 2,100. So 400 spots he moved, more than 400 spots he's moved up in the U.S. in terms of his ranking. That's crazy. And that's in one day. That's 13 hours later. That's insane. Um, let's jump over to Joe Biden. Like, look, look at this. 76,500. That's crazy. Uh, but we come down here. So let's take a look at yesterday, which is 77,000. 500. So he's moved up a thousand spots as well. Congratulations. Good job. Like each one of them has moved up a thousand spots, roughly. However, one of them ranks more than 75,000th in the globe, and the other one ranks fifth, under 15,000th. So substantially, like four times more popular uh, on a global basis, and 10 times more popular in the U.S. Like look at the U.S. ranking over here 22,409th. Let's go back to Andrew Yang. 2,100, so a factor of 10. His site is 10 times more popular. This is what the, the power of guerrilla marketing does. Well, I mean, also just connecting to people and, you know, understanding what the fuck is actually going on. <laughs> I just don't. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so now let's jump over here. We have the page views, two point or one point nine and two minutes and ten seconds. So that's again how many page views people visit on average and the amount of time they spend per visit on average. Let's go back over there to Andrew Yang just real quick to contrast this. A big difference. 
a big difference. You might say, oh, well, his is down five, his is down 2%, his is down this. Well, when you have a huge increase in the numbers, some of these things tend to uh, tend to change. Like if you have 100,000 followers, your engagement's say 1% and, or 2% or something, but when you have 100 million, your engagement is more than likely going to be different, right? Um, so let's go, and this this is clearly, you can see what's, what's happening. He went from, we don't get to see what he was in the U.S. ranking. All we get to see is on the global. So on the global, they both rank 1,000. Now, this is where it gets super interesting, and I want to hear your feedback on this. I'll give you my thoughts, but I really want to hear what you guys think if the thought process I'm going through is like, oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense, or no, that doesn't make any sense. So if you're watching this, you probably have some idea that um, in the media in general, the, the, the media likes to talk about uh, Joe Biden and Andrew Yang, or not Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang, they like to leave out of this, and I've made videos on that as well. Um, but they talk way more about Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and a little bit of Kamala Harris and that guy Pete. Um, that's who they talk about. Now, look at this, right? So this is the hashtag. Andrew Yang, we got that up here at the top. The hashtag for Andrew Yang over the previous 24 hours on Twitter. So you can see here that he's got people talking about him. But look at this. So around eight, 6 to 8, it starts ramping up. And it really gets his peak around 11 to 12 a.m. So this means, look at this. At 146 different people were talking about him, or maybe somebody that tweeted twice or five times with his name there. So like 100 people maybe, or between 100 and 150 people were talking about him at 11 p.m. What that happens is they tweet, they put the hashtag in there, their friends see it. That increases the exposure to <coughs> just Andrew Jiang's name in general. Plus you're going to get a little bit of a derivative from that in terms of traffic to the YouTube, traffic to Instagram, traffic to Twitter, traffic to um, their website. And this kind of this peak right here that we see starts at, it starts at say 6 p.m. and then goes to like 4 a.m. Let's go over here to Joe Biden. His, he's got a higher peak in terms of people talking about him, but this is at 12. So uh, something happened at 12 yesterday. More than likely the media was talking about him because it dwindles off in the evening. He does have a little pickup like Andrew Yang does, um, but it looks like there's a lot more people. It's much more drastic that the American public, because if you look at the time, people in the media are not necessarily going to be working between 6 p.m. That's like when they stop working. So when they get home, people start talking about Andrew Yang. This, in contrast, looks like more the media talking about Andrew Yang and getting mentioned. So... The media talks about it, people see that, and then they tweet about it, right? And as you can see, the volume of tweets here is greater, 220, um, 1 p.m., 181, 137, 131. If we come over here, right, that we got 115, 118, 146, 142. So on average, it looks like they're fairly similar. Like, he's got a couple of these ones here, which are much higher, and it looks like it came from an even higher point, but we don't have the data for that. Um, so this, I could say, could potentially be from Joe Biden would win this one. However, I do think it's very interesting about the timing of when this plays out, because I think the average, like, the actual American person, not the media, is what's actually interested. And, and, and to me, it just says it. Like, what are people doing at 10 o'clock at night? They're trying to find information about Andrew Yang. They are clearly not really trying to find out as much information about Joe Biden. Although if you look at, well, let me take that back a little bit. So his, even though the spike isn't as high, it's still at 100, and then it goes to 88. So he still had, people are still looking up Joe Biden during this time, but the media is tremendously helping. It looks like during the day here, um, and the spike is a little bit higher. So during the day, the spike is substantially higher, it looks like, for Joe Biden. But at nighttime, it's substantially higher for Andrew Yang, which to me just indicates that more like of the American population is actually interested um, because it's the timing of it. Like the media is not reporting shit at fucking 2 o'clock in the morning, right? Or very little bit. It's you and I just on Twitter. By the way, my Twitter fucking is suspended because I'm not sure why barely even use it, um, but 
that might have been the other video I made <laughs> about that CEO that tweeted about my shit and then deleted it on camera while I'm making a video. So if you want to check out that video, go back to the channel. Uh, anyways, uh, let's jump over to, um, and I do I really want to hear your thoughts on this portion of it because I, I saw that data and I was like, damn, that's super interesting. Uh, let's go over to Andrew Yang's YouTube channel. So we got his YouTube channel. I'll just refresh the page here. So let's scroll down here. So the debate was on the 12th, right? So it went, I think, from like 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock or something. And we see the um, the total number of subscribers for the day versus the average. And then the total number of views versus the average. So about 1.3 or 1.4 times for the, the, the number of subscribers, but more than two times for the number of views. Now, on day number two, so this is after like a lot more people start talking about it and that exposure really starts to build from that guerrilla marketing that Andrew did. And we see that the total number of subscribers almost doubled, so almost 2x in subscribers and almost 3x in terms of the views on an average basis. And this, right, at, at, it's 12.42 p.m. on the 14th right now on Saturday. And so this is only part of the data so far, and he's already had more than the average, and it's only you know 12 hours into the day so far. So that's pretty tremendous relative to the average. Now let's jump over to Joe Biden because maybe Joe's is three x right or two and a half x or three x or very similar to this. And we were like, well, that doesn't really mean anything, Sam. Like you just if Joe Biden got the same results. Uh, so let's jump over to Joe Biden's, um, and we're and we'll just press refresh up here so the page can load. We'll scroll down here. Now this is uh, to me this has to be inaccurate. Like so this is supposed to be the average over the last time period here. But look at the average it says is fifty eight hundred and fifty views, right? If you look over here, daily average fifty eight hundred and fifty. Now let's look at daily views and let's just scan through this. So we've got 1,700, 1,700, 1,200, 1,200, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, Increase right here, right? So if you say the average is maybe like twelve hundred or something, fifteen hundred. So say if it was fifteen hundred, that's a three x increase in terms of the views in day one, and like more cl closer to a four x, uh, or more over a four x in terms of the views uh, on day. Um, well, on, actually, on the day of, I'm sorry, the day the day of less than the average, about fifty percent less. If we're calling fifteen hundred as the average, three x the next day, and four x the day after that. Uh, so that tells me two things. First of all, that the people who are watching Andrew Yang are way more attuned with technology because they immediately went over and started watching content and looking for more information about Andrew Yang online because the day of the event, he had a big increase in terms of the number of views, right? The day of the event, which was the 12th, he had double, more than double the total number of views where Joe Biden had less. So people were clearly impacted by what he said immediately and just went over to YouTube to look for more information. The other thing is just the sheer size. Look, the, the average. Look at this. So if we look at Andrew Yang's, right? Uh, 20,033, 24, 23, 24, 24, 23, blah, 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 throughout this thing. So to have an average of 27, and yesterday it was 25, so to have an average of 27,000, that's reasonable. This is just inaccurate somewhere in the data. I'm not sure how Social Blade tracks this or why it's inaccurate, but this is definitely inaccurate. Um, unless it's over a much longer time period or just a time period of the last two days or something. Uh, but it's definitely inaccurate because actually it does kind of look like it would be the last two days, right? So this would be 10,000, 11,000. So this could be the average of the last two days or something. I don't know, but it doesn't look like it's uh, accurate at all. But look at the weekly average for Joe Biden. Let's come over here. Look at the daily average. Andrew Yang's daily average in terms of views is not too much less than Joe Biden's weekly. So he's got 41,000 versus 27,000 per day versus per month. Like that's pretty crazy. And if you look at the daily average, what we just saw up here, like the daily average is probably around 1,500 um, for Joe Biden. Obviously, the last couple of days is substantially higher. But the daily average is just, I mean, double, like, he's not, I mean, this is tremendous.
the amount of exposure that Andrew Yang has versus Joe Biden. And if you look over here, the number of subscribers over the last three days is what, 1,700 or 1,800 or something like that versus like, what, 50? Let's see, 200, yeah, like 50 roughly. I think that's 50 exactly actually over the last three days. 50 exactly versus, um, you know, 400, so 1,200 plus six is 1,800 plus. Like 1,800 plus subscribers versus 50. Like, that's insane. Like, just think about it, guys. Like, it's, what is that? 18 divided by 50, um, 36 times greater? Like, that. like, just think about that. 36 times greater in terms of the subscriber growth rate. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, I like looking at this data, and I really enjoy taking a look at this. When I run through all this data, I can clearly, for me, it clearly looks like what Andrew Yang did, he was the winner. He was the person that was able to garner the most exposure for himself to increase his relevance in the American public's mind on average um, compared to Joe Biden looking at these factors. Uh, I'd love to know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. If you like the message that we're getting across here, Share this video with somebody that helps out the channel substantially and it gets this message out of what we're doing. This is 2019. I think there's a better way of doing things than how we've been doing them in the past with some polling data and that kind of thing. Like people can talk and then you have talking heads that fucking think they know what they're talking about. But let's see what America actually thinks. Let's take a look at the actual data. Right? Because to me, that's way more relevant. I don't even watch these shows or pay attention to half of what, like, not even 10% of what any one of these candidates pay for or let, talk about. Primarily, I just look at the data because I want to understand what you, what the rest of America thinks about these people. Because that's way more, um, that's way more relevant to me than some fucking clown is talking ahead about like, oh, so-and-so said this, and I think they won, you know, they actually pulled ahead because they were the bigger person. Like, no, let's see what the world, let's see what, what the U.S. thinks. Let's see what the U.S. population thinks and how they are responding because that's way more relevant than some clown's fucking opinion about this shit, right? Like, I, you could look at the same amount of data and you could think Joe Biden won. That's completely fine. Like, I'm not trying to tell you what to think. I'm just showing you the data, and you can make the decision for yourself. So if you want to get that message out there, if you want to help, share this video. If you're like, fuck this, dude, it was a good, pretty good video, but I don't, like, care enough to share the video, if you press that thumbs up button, that tells the YouTube algorithm to show this video to more people. And if you don't want to do any of that, like, you don't want to press that subscribe button, you don't want to press that share button, and you don't want to press that like button, if literally you just tell your friends about what data is actually out there versus what the media says is out there, they can do it themselves. Like, you don't have to support the channel. Just tell people about what we're actually doing and the message that we're trying to get across that this is 2019, and I think the way that we do things needs to be adjusted from how they were done over the last century. So if you want to support that, press that subscribe button and that bell notification. notification got lots, lots more great content coming up. So don't forget to subscribe. If you guys want to uh, jump over to Instagram, there's a link in the description. I post a lot more about fitness and whatnot over on Instagram, and I post to the stories all the time. So jump over to Instagram and say what's up. Uh, appreciate you guys, and um, I do want to hear your feedback uh, going forward. Peace.